it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So um, this video, we're going to do a little more mechanics on the simulink side. And I'll just kind of uh, update you on kind of change the name to those welds. The other thing I did was I um, <clears throat> added that coordinate frame on the bottom of each of those. And we're going to use that for the basis of, uh, um, of modeling and representing the ground contact. Right, so let's bring all this. I'll close the old version. Let's bring it into MATLAB through the Get Geometry app. What's great about Simscape multi-body is it, among other things, it conforms to really kind of the conventional description of mechanics. You know, and mechanics is all about bodies, joints, and coordinate systems. And I think we saw that as we built this model inside SimWise. And so I'll just kind of give a little bit of a tour of that as we look at, or, or we see what it looks like on the, the Simulink side, right? And, um, you know, for example, here are our joints. All right, those weld all the motors into the frame. We see the two beams right there, and we see our chassis right there. Now, the body part, well, I go in here. Well, that's the body we drew up. Uh, the radius and the length might be, uh, you might recall those numbers we put in. And then finally, um, with that geometry selected and with a choice that we've given very little attention to so far, but a default choice for density, then we can essentially calculate what the mass and the the center mass location the, and the moments and products of inertia. And those are the kind of, I'll call the key definition or key parameters that define what a what a body is in the calculation. Um, all right. Now um, joints and here's a good one to look at. You know, here's a motor. Right. Then now that's a revolute joint. It means I take this coordinate frame, I take this coordinate frame, and I can constrain how they can move relative to each other. And in the case of revolute joint, and in the case of this one, it's constrained such that they share the same z-axis, but they can rotate. And therefore, x and y can be uh, at differing angles uh, to, to each other. Uh, anyways, I won't get, I won't belabor kind of the definition of a revolute joint. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is that well, what's a motor? Well, motor is an actuated revolute joint. In this case, we're sending in torque to drive motion. And I won't get into all the details of how this works, but certainly the fact that this is done with MATLAB, we can write scripts and functions and, and masks to subsystems to, to make all kinds of cool things happen. And, and so the default is for it to come over for motors to be receiving torque, but we could just directly assign motion. We'll see the signal labels, at least the input ports, uh, will reflect that. And you'll see that you make use of this little extension called PVA, it stands for position, velocity, and acceleration. And so perhaps in a, a, a follow-up video, I'll kind of explain why in prescription of motion, it's good to make the calculations of the derivatives yourself. Hence, velocity, the first derivative of position, and acceleration, the second derivative. Uh, uh, it's good to send those in. So that's a three component array or signal that will be sent in. All right. So let's, let's put it back to force torque. All right. And um, I think we're ready to run. It falls freely. Okay. I put that six dot joint in on the semwise side. That's why we get that. And uh, the other thing I did put in, you know, is. I think I showed it, didn't I? All right. Yeah. On the underside of each of these, there, there's a coordinate frame right there. And they're all called ground. All right. So let's get it into the Simulink model. And for each of those motor cases, we see the availability for a port right there to connect into. And I'll show you what we're about to do. All right. And so bring up my Simulink browser. 
And under Terry's component, I have this kind of useful thing here called a ground response. And I just connect it in right there. All right, it's got this mask. And basically, you tell it where it is, where the ground is. And then you put in essentially uh, stiffness and damping for what will effectively be a spring damper type response. And I'm going to disable my link and break my link. All right, and I'll copy that and I'll use it. Okay, and we'll hit run again. See a little bit of a bounce. And that's what I mean by like a little spring damper. Let's see, I'm doing okay on time. And so I'm gonna just kind of show a little bit under the hood. And so with regard to all these coordinate frames, well, we can make measurements and we're making Z measurement positions relative to a world frame as well as the velocity. And we'll see how that's used as the basis well, up here, a spring response, and here, a damping response. And that that force calculated will be um, sent in to um, participate in the mechanical calculation being done by Simscape Multibody. So anyways, um, I think we're pretty good on that. And the last thing I want to do is I want to spin the propellers. And so I'm going to use a constant. Set the magnitude of torque. And we'll make it 1,000. In the port import signal thing there, uh, it's telling me the units are Newton meters. Right? So I'll just send that in for all four motors. OK, and I'm going to run it from here. So I'll hit the little green button up there. And we'll see those propellers are going to start spinning. And this was the thing, you know, the first time I built this model was the unexpected. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. You know, and ultimately what we're observing here is the, the truth and the reality of any quadcopter. And the effect needs to be any, any kind of flight vehicle that employs propellers needs to account for this. And so uh, all four of my propellers are spinning in the same direction. So for angular momentum to be conserved, uh, the whole vehicle needs to to turn in response to that, and so the the general fix that's taken place in the in the industry is to not spin all the propellers in the same direction. So I'll simply use a gain to change the direction of the applied torque for the two propellers or the two motors that are uh, defined with the, the, the sub in or on the negative end of the, of the uh, beam carriers. All right, so anyways, with that I'll hit run. Okay, and now the whole thing doesn't rotate, but it's really a pretty cool effect. So anyways, uh, kind of simple demo here, really to just kind of show what Simscape multi-body is, to show it is kind of a what you see is what you get. You know, that, that same um, convention of bodies, joints, and coordinate systems that we built it with with Simwise is reflected in, in the components that make up the model in, on the Simulink side with Simscape multi-body. Um, and then that you just get this kind of cool stuff that once you're inside Simulink that you can kind of use and configure and, and really kind of make things work like we did with the, the ground contact. So anyways, we'll kind of proceed with the mechanics a little bit further uh, in the next couple of videos. And um, thank you uh, for watching this one. All right, look forward to uh, producing the next ones. Okay, bye.